Percent problems can be written as a proportion. And this right here is the way we, we write that. These letters each have a, have a meaning to it. The most important probably like um, to, to think about is the base. It's what, what is 100% or it's what we're kind of relating the percentages to. So this is called the base, also known as the whole. It's what we're relating a part to, whatever that part may be. That's what this P here is, is the part. It's the portion of a whole. Now, of course, it can be a larger portion of the whole, in which case the percentage will be greater than 100%. If it's less than the whole, then it'll be um, smaller than 100%. If it equals the whole, then it'll be equal to 100%. And that is the last thing. It gives us percentage. Obviously, we can't use P here because P is used for part. The percentage will always be a percent, whatever percent value you're looking for. Now, to solve these proportions, um, only one of these three things, base, part, or percentage, can be unknown. The other two have to be given to you in some fashion. This 100%, that's always going to be 100%. Um, you can just think of it as the number 100 instead of using the percent sign. Just know that this percent and the percentage, they both have a percent sign on the end of it. They end up canceling in the mathematics, but make sure that you understand that the percents are, are, are supposed to be there. When you do the mathematics, you will not use the percent sign. Okay, now we had in a previous video, we had an example that says, what percent is 3.5 inches of a foot, uh, of a foot? Now the way we can know which parts of these things, right? We're looking for the part, the whole, and the percentage. And one of those is gonna be a variable X, and the other two are gonna have actual numbers. The way we know which one's which, um, the percentage is the, is the easiest one because it's gonna be a percent sign. Now there is no percentage in here, which means that's what we're looking for. What percent? That's gonna be our X. It's gonna be X percent is 3.5 inches of a foot. Now, which one of those is the part and which one of those is the base? The key word here is of. Typically, of designates the base. So a foot, now, of course, we're, we're talking about inches here, so we don't really wanna use you know one, one foot. You wanna use this as 12 inches. But 12 inches is going to be the whole. That's because it says of a foot or of 12 inches. So our base equals 12 inches. And we know the part is going to equal 3.5 inches. Now to solve, to solve for x percentage, all we have to do is use this proportion. Uh, P is 3.5 base is 12. This equals the percentage, which is x, over 100. We solve this by cross multiplying and dividing. 3.5 times 100 is 3, uh, 350 equals 12 times x. And of course, we divide with a number in front of the x. So we get x equal to 29.166, repeating, you could just say 29.17, and this is a percentage. If you remember in the last one, we did, we did 3.5 over 12, that gave us um, 0.2917, and we changed that to a percentage. When we do these types of problems, the percentage will be just the percentage. Don't, don't change it into a decimal. That's the whole point of this, of this uh, 100 here. That changes it into a decimal in, in the mathematics. Okay, 35% of 200 is what? Well, we have of 200, that's gonna be the base. 35%, well that's obviously a, a percentage, so it's gonna be R, the percentage. 
And the only, the only thing we don't know is what P is. That's going to be our X. So let me just write this uh, one more time here. P over B equals R over 100%. P is our X, uh, X variable. B is 200. R is 35. And we always have 100 there. Cross, multiply, and divide. Whoops, let me do this like I normally do. Uh, 35 times 200 plus 7,000. And of course, we divide by 100, giving us x equal to 70. So 35% of 200 is 70. 15% of what is 6? 15%, that's going to be our percentage. Of what? Well, that's going to be our base because we have the of there. And we don't know what that is, so we know it's going to be x. And 6, that's going to be our part. So we have uh, 6 over the base, which is x. The percentage over 100. Cross, multiply, and divide. 6 times 100 is 600, 15 times x is 15x, x equals 600 divided by 15, which is 40. But 15% of 6, oh sorry, 15% of 40 is 6. 30 is what percentage, so that means r, the percentage, is going to equal the x variable here, because we don't know what that is. Of 20, of 20 is our base because of the, uh, the word of there, and 30 is the part. Now, since the part is greater than the base, the percentage is going to be greater than 100. We have uh, the part over the base equals the percentage over 100. Cross, multiply, and divide. We get 30 times 100 is 3,000. Uh, 3,000 equals 20 times x. We just divide by 20 there. And we get, let's see, cut that in half, and we get 150. And that is a percentage, because that was the variable r. So 30 is 150% of 20. Okay, what percent of 80? What percent? That's the percentage of 80. That's going to be our base is 60 that's going to be our part so part over base equals percentage over 100 cross multiply and divide 60 times 100 is 6000 equals 80 times x uh, let's see got 75 and that is a percent so 60 is 75 percent of of 80 or to say what it says 75% of 80 is 60 okay 14 is 70% of what takes take a moment think about which one uh, which which of these is which part is it the base the part or the percentage okay 14 is the part 70 is the percentage and of what that has to be the base because of the word of so we have Part over base equals percentage over 100. Cross multiply and divide. We're just going to divide by 70 here. Cancels there. We get uh, 20, I believe. And that's the base, so that does not need a percentage mark there. 0.5% is the percentage of 32, that, or sorry, of 3.2, that's gonna be the base. And what is, that must be the part, because that's the remaining um, variable there, which will be x, of course. Part over base equals, um, percentage over 100. 
All right, cross multiply and divide. 3.2 times 0.5. 1.6. I guess 0 0.016. And that is not a percentage, so there we go. Uh, 0 0.016 is half a percent of 3.2, which is gonna which makes sense. Half a percent is a very small, very small number. Okay, a couple more of these. 2.5 is what percent, what percent, that means r equals x, of 4, that's going to be our base, which means that has to be our part. Part over base equals percentage over 100. Cross multiply and divide, 2.5 times 100 is 250, equals 4x, divide by 4 of course, and x equals, uh, it's going to be a decimal, for yeah, sixty-two point five. So two point five is let's say percentage. So two point five is sixty-two point five percent of four. Five is what percent? Again, x of fifteen. That's going to be our base, and five is a is the part. Now, real quick. 5 is what percent of 15? 5 times 3 is 15, which means 5 is going to be a third of 15, which you should expect to be what, whatever the percentage for a third is, which is going to be 33.3333 repeating. So it should be around 33%. That's what we're expecting. Let's actually see the math um, bring it out. The part over the whole equals the percentage over 100 cross multiply and divide 5 times 100 is 500 15 times x is 15x divide by 15 and we get x equal to yep 33.33 and it continues on indefinitely uh, percentage the profit from Ed's Plumbing Company increased by 14460 or 30% this year. What was the profit the company earned last year? So if it increased by 30%, um, I'm, I'm going to try and reword this into a way that we can actually understand um, using the techniques I just showed you um, to write out the proportion. So we're, we're going to use these numbers. We obviously have a percentage here, R. We don't know, however, if this is our base or the part. We need to figure out which one of that is. Okay? So let's think about what it's saying. The profit, uh, what profit did the company earn last year? If it earned 14,460, or in other words, 30% this uh, increase this year, then that means it earned 30% more of the profit last year, which means I can rewrite this saying 14,460 is 30% of what? And now you can see what that means. This right here has to be the percentage of what? This is our base. And this right here has to be our part. So we can do part. There's no need to write that comma in there. Over the base, which is our x, equals percentage over 100. Cross multiply and divide, we get, uh, let's see, 144600 zero, 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 equals 30x, divide by 30. And x will equal, four eight two hundred and since the part was a dollar amount the base is going to be a dollar amount so 30 percent of 48,200 is 14,460 all right here we have a photocopy um, of, of an image being enlarged to 100 or 20 percent of its size 
what are its new dimensions? Now it might be, you, you might want to say that one of these is gonna be the, the part and one of these is gonna be the whole, but that would be incorrect. We do know, however, that this has to be the percentage because that's what it's gonna be grown to. Now, the reason why eight and 10 are neither, are, are not, you know, one's not the part and one's not the base, that's because you don't see the word of there. What we're actually asking here is if it's being enlarged to 120% of its size, we're, we're looking at each dimension individually. We're, we're, we're looking at the width individually and then the length individually. So we have two problems here that we have to solve, two proportions. So if we say, if we say we are enlarging a photo 120% of its size, what are its new dimensions? And what we're looking at is of its size, these are the size dimensions. What are its new dimensions? Well, there's gonna be two of them. There's gonna be a width and a length that are, that are the new sizes. So of its size, that means that these are gonna be the base measurements. Each one of these are a base measurement in a separate problem. And that means that these here, I should say base here, these new dimensional sizes here are gonna be the part the increased proportion. So let's just figure out um, one size and you'll see how it works. Eight inches, let's start with that. Uh, a photocopy is enlarged to a 120% of an eight inch width. What is the new width? In other words, the new width is from the old width is 120% the original size. This was the base. The new dimensional width is the part. 120 is the, is the new dimension. 100% was the original size. So you see how eight and 100 are like the original dimensions of this photo. And then the width and 120% are the new dimensions of, of this, um, I think it's said window, of this um, photo. That's uh, another way to make sure you have written this out correctly is making sure the relevant pieces of each um, of the proportion is is the correct in the correct spots. So let's cross multiply and divide. W times one hundred is one hundred W. One twenty times eight is nine sixty, and you divide by one hundred. We get w equal 9.6 now this is going to be 9.6 inches and we can check our, our work to make sure we're doing this correctly if we're increasing right we're enlarging the photo to 120 percent of its size then that means eight inches should go to something bigger it's not going to be extremely you know extremely big it's not going to be double the size that'd be 200 percent it's going to be a little bit bigger which 9.6 inches is a little bit bigger so that's that's a good estimate to say that yeah we've we've done the problem correctly so we can use the exact same process for the length l times 100 is 100 l uh, 10 times 120 is 1200 and of course we divide by 100 getting l equal to 12 inches which if 10 is increased by 120 percent then 12 inches is a good guess. So the new photo is 9.6 times 12 uh, by 12 inches. All right, here we have an electrician needing a fuse for a motor. The motor current is 50 amps and the fuse must be rated at 175% of the motor current. What size fuse will the electrician need? So 175%, that's of course our percentage of the motor current well, that's just 50 amps. That's going to be of the motor current. That's going to be our base. What size fuse will we need? That's our part. So that's going to be the x, uh, x variable. So x, sorry, the part over the base, which is 50 amps. Capital A is the um, unit for that. Uh, equals the part, or sorry, the percentage over 100. Part over base equals percentage over 100. And of course, these are both percents, but they of course cancel 
and x will be an amp, so those will cancel as well. Cross multiply and divide, 100 times x is 100x. Uh, 175 x times 50 is 8750. Divided by 100 gives us 87.5 amps. So 175% of 50 amps is 87.5 amps. This one's going to be a little bit, a little bit uh, weird, but I, I think it'll make sense. If you just take it slowly and make sure you understand what the problem is asking. If 5 ounces of alcohol are mixed with 12 ounces of water, what is the percent concentration? So we're looking for the percent concentration. In other words, we're looking for the percentage. That's going to be our x variable of alcohol in the resulting solution. Now this of alcohol is a little confusing because you might think that's the base, which is which is incorrect. This is one of those cases where the wording, uh, the English of the, the, the problem doesn't quite help us with um, um, what we're trying to find for the proportion. Now, what are we trying to find? We're trying to figure out what's the percent concentration of alcohol in resulting solution. So alcohol to resulting solution. Obviously, if we mix if we mix five ounces of alcohol and 12 ounces of water, we're going to have a total solution of five plus 12 ounces, five ounces plus 12 ounces of water. This gives us 17 ounces of total solution, or sorry, resu resulting solution. So this is what the, the large amount is. Now, if five ounces of alcohol is going into that, we're going to have a small portion, a, um, a smaller percentage than 100, right? Because five ounces is less than 17. So the percentage of five ounces and 17 ounces is going to be less than 100%. The way we write that, the way we show that is we take 5 ounces of alcohol in 17 ounces of solution. This is going to make a proportion this is going to make the proportion work so that x is going to be less than 100. That's because 5 is smaller than 17, which means x is going to be smaller than 100. I hope that makes sense. Um, the, the, the tricks of, of the, the, the way I've been showing you the of, you know, of something is going to be the base. That normally works. Sometimes the English, however, it, it kind of changes the way we, we have to interpret the mathematics. Okay, 5 times 100, uh, x times 17. That gives us 500 equals 17x. Divide by 17. And we get x equal to 29.41. And this is a percentage. So 5 in, in 17 is 29.41%. Okay, this is an interesting problem. Um, I'm, I'm going to show you this, how to do this two different ways. Um, one using the regular way and one using a, a faster, more advanced way. Um, so we have an independent mechanic purchasing 20% discount of, of a retail price, and then she charges 50% more for a customer to make up some um, money. And we're asking how much does she charge when she gets a, a discounted price of 75.20. So the first way I, I want you to think about this is, let's take this in steps. Let's figure out first, what is the full price of the product? And then what is the the, the amount that she charges the customer for. So if the distributor gives her a 20% discount and that discounted price is 75.20, then how much of a percentage does that make? If a 20% discount, you can think of a 20% discount is 20% off of 100%. That means it's an 80% uh, priced item. So it, it's 80% of what it used to be caught, uh, of what it, of the original cost. Let me say it like that. Okay, to find what the original cost of the, of the brake pads was, all we have to do is take 
7520 is the discounted price and we're trying to figure out 7520 is 80% of what so we have 7520 of the original full price right this is going to be less than this number here 7520 is going to be smaller than x equals 80% of 100 80 is smaller than 100 Okay, we can do this. We can figure out what x is by cross multiplying and dividing. We get 7520 equals 80x divided by 80. And we get x equal to 94. So 80% of 94 is 7520. Now we will take this, this full price and she charges 15% of uh, on top of retail price. So if retail price was 100% and she charges 15% more, then we have an increase of 15%, so we get 115%. Okay? Now we know what the base is, the right? The base is 94%, or sorry, $94. And we're increasing that to be what part of $94 is 115%. So we have X over 94 equals 115 over 100, right? 100 increases to 115, 94 will increase to some, some new number. It's going to be some bigger number. That's because 100 went up, 94 will also go up. Cross multiply and divide. 115 times 94 equals 10, 810. X equals 10810. So she bought the part for 7520 and she sells the part for $108.10. So she's making about a $30 profit on that. Now, there is a way to solve this with using only one proportion, and that is understanding that you don't have to have just 100 right here. You can change this number if you know what you're doing. So we, we already know certain parts of this. We're, we're going to use the same kind of information that it was originally $80. That was the 7520 cost. And we want to know what is the new cost when we're at 115%. To do that, we can write it like this. If we have, uh, it, it doesn't quite matter how you write this percentages on the, on the um, right hand side, as long as you know which way you're going. Let's say we have uh, not 80, yep, 80% 80 here, and we're going up to 115%. We know that 80% is 7520. What we want to know is that if 80 increases to 115%, what does 7520 increase to? So that's going to be our x variable. If we cross multiply and divide this, we have 80x equals 115 times 7520 equals 8648. Divide by 80, and we get 108.10. So it's a different way of doing the same problem. It's faster, but you have to uh, kind of break the, the uh, rules that I've, I've shown you here. If you know how to do it well, it'll work out, um, and it'll, it'll give you the right answer at the, at the very end.